The World Cup draw has left us with some promising groups and one of them is Group A which consists of Ecuador, Senegal, Netherlands and Qatar who are the hosts. I believe that all these teams in Group A can qualify for the round of 16 so let's break it down. Real quick though remember to subscribe to the channel and remember to hit the notification bell it'll help me a lot and it'll notify you whenever I drop an absolute banger and also remember to leave a like let's try reaching 200 likes this video. And now let's get into my Group A breakdown slash predictions. Let's start by talking about the host nation Qatar. So I've noticed that everyone is writing off Qatar almost immediately without giving them a chance. I feel like everyone's forgetting that in 2019 they actually won the Asian Championships which is a huge achievement for them. Adding on to that they have some solid players that can do some damage at this World Cup. One of those players is Almoz Ali who is a top striker that has 36 goals in 76 games for Qatar at the senior level. He also really impressed me in the CONCACAF Gold Cup which happened last summer in the United States. In fact they went all the way to the semifinals only losing to the United States thanks to a last minute Giassi Zardes goal. And Zardes wow what a goat man. Another player to watch out for in the Qatar national team has to be Akram Hafif. Although yes he plays in the Qatar league now for all side he actually used to play in Spain in fact he played a part in Villarreal's youth system and also played a part in the Villarreal senior team as well clearly he has what it takes to be in La Liga and he was part of the La Liga youth system as well which means he does have quality he's an incredible playmaker for Qatar so expect him to be on the ball a lot of the times during this World Cup and trying to play that last pass it's also extremely important to note that host nations usually do very well in the tournament and usually overperform and yes I know South Africa didn't get out of the group in 2010 but they still did pretty good as well another few examples has to be Russia in 2018 where they surprisingly made it all the way to the quarterfinals of the World Cup. And in 2014, Brazil went all the way to the semifinals, only losing to Germany 7-1. Dang, bro, that 7-1 scoreline, that's a throwback. And even in 2002, where South Korea made it all the way to the semifinals of the World Cup. Yes, it was pretty controversial, but still, it counts. So overall, Qatar is a pretty solid and underrated team, and since they're their host nation, they can actually overperform. Basically, just don't sleep on them. Now let's go on to the next country on this list, Ecuador. They actually qualified for the World Cup after missing out on the 2018 version. And throughout qualifying, they were consistently in third place until the very end, where they actually screwed up in the last four games. They had three draws and one loss and it looked like everything was slipping away for Ecuador. However, thanks to Uruguay who controversially beat Peru, Ecuador got their place in the World Cup in Qatar. Now to talk about Ecuador, they're a very young and very inexperienced national team. In fact, they used the second youngest average squad in World Cup qualifying only behind the United States who had the youngest average squad. Although they're young, they have some very good underrated players that have a broad experience which will be vital in this year's World Cup. For example, they have Hincapi who is the 20 year old center back for Leverkusen. Not only that, they have Estupinian from Villarreal, Sefuentes from LAFC, Alan Franco from Charlotte, and Ender Valencia, who is probably the most notable player on this list, who plays for Fenerbahce. Not only that, they have my player to watch for Ecuador, Moises Casado, who is on Brighton. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a huge expert on the Ecuadorian national team. However, even someone who's not an expert like me should understand that you should never count out a young, hungry, and an inexperienced team. They're definitely gonna be a fun team to watch at this year's World Cup, and they might even pull off some upsets. Now let's get to the two big top dogs of this group, and first off, let's start with Senegal. So as we all probably know by now, Senegal is actually the recent AFCON champions after defeating Beating Egypt in a penalty shootout. Not only that, they had to play Egypt again in the World Cup qualifying to see who qualifies in the World Cup from those two. They even got into another penalty shootout again with Egypt. However, history repeats itself with Sadio Mane taking the winning penalty again, just like he did in the AFCON final to make sure Senegal going to the World Cup. And yes, it's important to note that the penalty shootout was a little bit controversial because of all the green lasers shining on the Egyptian players. Like, bro, just look at Mohamed Salah. His entire face was green. He basically turned into Gamora from Guardians of the Galaxy. Regardless, though, it's no secret that Senegal is a very talented squad. They've got world class talent on their team. Like Sadio Mane from Liverpool, Koulibaly from Napoli, and Edouard Mendy at Chelsea. Not only that, they have some other good players like Diallo from PSG, Idrissa Gay from PSG, Saar from Bayern Munich, and another Saar, Ismaili Saar from Watford. Personally, this is probably the best Senegal team I've ever seen in my lifetime. Like, this squad is super, super stacked with a lot of talented players. And this is why they're probably one of my biggest dark horses in this World Cup. I believe they can make it really far. In fact, I think they have the potential to go all the way to the semifinals. So just don't be surprised if I end up being correct. Now, let's move on to the European powerhouses group. Netherlands. Now, although this team looks very strong on paper with the likes of Virgil van Dijk, Wijnaldum, De Ligt, Memphis Depay, Dan Juma, Bergwijn, De Jong, they really haven't shown that quality on the pitch. Yes, they got first place in the World Cup qualifying group, but most European powerhouses do that anyways, except Italy. They managed to screw that up. So let's look at the very recent tournament that Netherlands played in, the Euros. They somehow managed to screw it all up against Czech Republic in the round of 16 and go out extremely disappointingly. With a team so stacked on paper, losing to the Czechs is pretty embarrassing, with all due respect, Czech Republic. However, this time could be very different with Virgil Van Dijk finally returned to the Netherlands national team. Not only that, after missing historic tournaments like the World Cup in 2018 along with the Euros in 2016, they definitely want to prove themselves again back on the world stage. They even got their manager back from 
the 2014 World Cup, Louis Van Hall, who took the Netherlands national team all the way to the semifinals. However, it's pretty important to know that Van Hall has recently come out and revealed that he has cancer and now Koeman will take over the Netherlands job after the World Cup in 2023. I pray for Van Hall's well-being and hopefully everything will be okay at the end of the day. But this can be very good motivation for all the Netherlands players to leave their all on the pitch and fight until the end. I feel like with this new chip on their shoulders, I feel like all the Netherlands players are going to leave it out all on the pitch to make sure their manager is lifting the World Cup at the end of the month. This could potentially be Netherlands year man to finally win the World Cup. Now if you guys haven't seen my early World Cup predictions, let me give you guys a summary. I said Netherlands will get first place and Senegal second while Ecuador actually gets third and Qatar gets last place and fourth place. However, do not be surprised if Qatar manages to pull off third place and making sure Ecuador finishes fourth instead. They're the host nation and host nations often overperform so they can pull off an upset here. Not only that, don't be surprised if Senegal takes the top spot instead of the Netherlands. Even though the Netherlands are very stacked on paper, Senegal have a very talented squad as well and they have that fight in them. They really want to prove everybody wrong on the world stage. So don't be surprised if Senegal take the top spot instead of Netherlands, bruh. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about my Group A breakdown in the comments down below. I read almost every single comment, so I'd love to know what you guys think. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and remember to hit the notification bell. It'll help me a lot and I'll notify you whenever I drop a banger. And remember to leave a like, let's try reaching 200 likes this video. So yeah, thanks again and I'll see you guys in the next video. Man, peace!